Just before we get into the detail on it, I I'm assuming the last year for taxi drivers has not been particularly wonderful. Uh, no, no, I mean, it's, it's been a tough time. It's fair to say it's been terrible for them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're still here. The drivers are still wanting to drive. Right. We've got road maps out. We've got vaccinations. Yeah. And quite a few drivers have worked throughout the whole pandemic. If I, had, if I lived in London and I had to go somewhere in a taxi, I would definitely choose any London taxi because of the partition exactly. between you and the driver. Exactly. So. And the drivers that have worked uh, have sanitised the taxi after right. every journey. And as you rightly say, they're partitioned off. So it's probably the safest form of travel in yeah. the current climate in yeah. London, I would yeah. think. But let's go into the detail of this cab because it's basically it's an it's an ENV 200 I would call it. I don't know yes, if that's it is. the right thing. Yes, no, no, it's actually <laughs> underneath. It's, it starts life as an ENV 200 Evalia seven seat MPV. It's not a van. Right. Um, the reason we chose that vehicle was the Evalia is the top of the range. Right. And and we started by building a driver's taxi. These guys spend nine hours a yeah. day in it. As a passenger, we're in it for 20 minutes. Yeah. So the Avalia has everything that a driver would ever want. Uh, heated seats, heated steering wheel, DAB, full sat nav navigation, cruise control, speed limiter. There's nothing it hasn't got. Right. There's no optional extra to have it. Indeed, the passengers, we've not fallen by on the passenger comfort. They're the passengers that love them. They've got a huge, big uh, glass roof in right. the back, so they can see these iconic buildings as they're driving by. They've got their own air conditioning and heating system in the back, and they've got their own little uh, USB plugs and things like that. So it's it's geared up. But if you're five foot four as a driver, or you're six foot five as a driver, you can still fit in a dynamo right. very comfortably. Right. I mean, it, it does look it looks the business. So it's a five seater. I it's mean, a five it, passenger yeah, and a driver. Yes, and a driver. Right. And actually, you've got, and you've got luggage storage in the front yes, as well. Yes, right. it's traditional London specification yeah. hackney with the turning circle for London and everything. Right, right it does have the, I was going to say, yes. does it have the turning circle? Yes, now, have does, you had yeah. to modify it to get that, or is that...? Is that no, no, no. Um, uh, this is way out of my comfort zone right. now, because I'm not an engineer, but right. our engineers have, uh, have, have re-engineered a whole new steering rack right. to get the 8.4 metre turning circle. Right. So that is a di so is it, it isn't the standard Nissan no no it's not it's and it's modified. not on the rear wheels like some of them were it's on the front wheel right. steering as well right mm. brilliant that is amazing so the, now the thing that I um, this is from experience of meeting and talking to lots of taxi drivers when I'm in the back you know <laughs> yeah. going, have you thought of, and this is like maybe five years ago have yeah. you thought about having an electric yeah. you know they're no good. They're good for delivering milk, they're too slow, the batteries will fall, like, all those excuses. All the reasons why it won't work. Yes, <laughs> yes, there's always a pile of reasons why it won't work. But now, one of the key things that you mentioned to me earlier on was the range, because I would have assumed when I first heard about these vans when they first came out, so they probably came out with, uh, you know, 32 kilowatt hour batteries or something. 24, 24 yeah. 24 was the first one with 24. Mm. So then you were talking... 70 or 80 miles. At the mm. most, mm. on a sunny day if it was mm. flat. So this one got a bigger battery. So this is a 40 kilowatt battery. Right. Now, the real figures recorded by the, the hundred or so drivers that are currently operating in London, between March and October, it's around 150 to 160 wow, miles. We've had drivers are reporting more than that, right. but we'd never tell potential customers you'll get yeah. more than that because we want to be realistic. In, in the winter months, when the weather gets cold, as you know with electric, yeah. the batteries always suffer a bit. When the weather gets cold and the heating's on, the range, the workable range then is between about 110 and 130, 120, right. something like that. So the worst case scenario for a driver is in the winter months, he'll go onto a rapid charger for 20 minutes, he'll have a cup of tea during his shift, and that 20 minutes on a rapid charger will put 60 miles back into the vehicle. Yeah. So it just works for them, yeah. Right. But also, it is that different, so if you were driving <clears throat> this car on a, a motorway, at full speed, you're not going to get that. But, but what, what we're talking about here no. is city driving, which is, by definition, really slow, start-stop, constantly. Mm. Mm. You know, that's what you're doing. And that is when, when I've driven an electric car, I live out in the country, so I'm not used to this, but when I drive electric cars in a city, I go, this thing isn't using any battery. Absolutely. It's incredible Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the story I re re reiterate to so many drivers is that when we launched it at City Hall back in October 2019, the, the, the taxi there, had 149 miles on it, and it was a driver's taxi. And he lived at Gerard Cross, and he went, drove through London in, at 6 o'clock on a Friday night out to Gerard Cross. Well, all the regenerative braking every time he took his foot off the accelerator. Yeah. Or the brake. It was 149 miles when he left City Hall. When he got to his house in 
uh, Gerard's Cross, there's 163 miles left on it. So it regenerated <laughs> uh, yeah, 14 miles whilst he was driving 20 miles home. Right. Or whatever yes. it was. Yes. Yeah. That, so that, and that would really confuse people who are used Absolutely, to a diesel. Absolutely, yes. Mean, it, it does. Make it does, yeah. But then, so the you know, critical things are, it's going to happen anyway. I mean, I'd say this is what I'm intrigued because this is really down to the drivers, no one else. Because there's no question, if you're a, a, ta a person in London and you want a taxi, and you see an electric one, you'll go, brilliant, I want the electric one. You're not going to go, oh, I, I think I'll wait till no, one of the really no. rackly, <clears throat> dirty, hot, old diesel ones comes along. No, you're absolutely right, Robert. I mean, the reason it has the words 100% electric on the side is because the public asked for that to right, be on the side. Right. They wanted to be seen in it. And yeah. indeed, we've had lots of uh, drivers saying to us that uh, when they're before COVID, when they're on the rank, a customer, and if they were the fourth one down the rank, right. a potential customer would wait till they got to the top of the rank to get in it wow. because they wanted to be seen in it. Yeah. And, and it's, in many respects, it's a test drive for them because they've never been in an electric vehicle yeah, before. Yeah. And, and there's indeed one or two people that reported back as a, as a, as a direct result of drive, uh, being a passenger in a dynamo, they've been out and purchased their next electric vehicle car, as, a, wow. as an electric vehicle, you right. know, because of their first experience, yeah. was it? Well, and presumably they're also asking the driver, you know, what, what are the, why have you got an electric one? Is it, is it better? Do, what, does it run out? Have you had to talk? Yeah, these they do, yeah. All isn't, those questions. Isn't it charged by burning coal? <laughs> well, only if I drive to Poland. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally you get those, you yeah. know, what about where's the electricity going to come yeah. from to power and that sort of stuff. So in terms of the uptake then, what, I mean, what's the level of interest in, from taxi drivers in the UK? Before COVID, we had a huge, great order book. I right. mean, huge. We, we couldn't have coped with it then it, it pretty much overnight died yeah. off. They weren't, we, were, we prefer not to call them cancellations, they were deferments, postponements, because now with talk of, uh, you know, with vaccinations rolling out, with roadmaps, with talks of businesses reopening in May time, my phone has got very noticeably busier. Right. Um, but it's not just end users. I mean, in London right now, there's a huge problem. There's 21,000 badge holders, people licensed to drive a London taxi. Right. And as we stand, there's 13,500 taxis. So right. there's a huge shortage. Oh. Now, in addition to that, there are 1,000 coming off the road through Transport for London's policy of, of age limits on right. diesel vehicles. So there's 1,000 diesels coming. So there's a real problem in London for taxis. Dynamo is, is, is one vehicle. There's two vehicles, as we know. Um, and the, the demand for dynamo already by the fleet operators in London uh, and by the end users, the single sole traders that make up a majority because 40% uh, of the taxis in London are generally owned by yeah. fleet operators and rented but the end users themselves, the demand is, is growing by the day but it's not just London, it's, right. it's, it's all around the UK and we can only see the demand just carrying on and carrying on and carrying on because it works for the local authorities and it works for the drivers, yeah. so it's a win-win. And the fact that local authorities are going to buy them themselves to give to the drivers to try before they yeah. buy, just accelerates that demand for them. So if, so if there's a, a driver in central London, he's done you know, quite a few miles, he's done a load of rides, and he does need to charge, it, it, is, are there now rapid chargers that, are there rapid chargers that are specifically installed for cabbies? For yeah, there absolutely drivers? are, yeah. Right. And, and that's growing by the day. And, and one of the features on, on Dynamo is that uh, every month you can just press on the sat nav and it updates all the inf rapid charging, all, all the that. charging points right. in the UK, right. everywhere. But the drivers get to know where they are yeah. in London. And, uh, and there's more and more being installed. Not right. just rapid chargers, because some drivers don't have driveways, so they use street chargers. Right. And in one or two boroughs, the lampposts, they can charge off of a lamppost yeah. and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, London are gearing up for this in a big yeah. way, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and those ultra-low emission zones are getting bigger. Yes. So there's more, there's more requirement for it. Right. That, so then the thing that I think is the real critical argument is the running costs. So oh, I'm assuming, sure. I mean, and particularly with taxis, it's interesting because a, a, the traditional black diesel taxi that we know and love, as I'm often told, yeah. they are not cheap cars to buy. They never have been. They've always been very expensive because they've got to do a job. I mean, they're working far more. Yeah, they but are. But then the, so the price differential between a car like this and the uh, traditional taxi, is, I'm guessing, is less than, say, the cheapest petrol car and an electric car on the Oh, for sure, piece. yeah, it is. Uh, a traditional diesel London taxi, in non-COVID times, the driver will spend about £150 a week on diesel. Right. To do the same mileage in this, it's 
around 10 to 15 pounds. Right. Maybe 20 yes. pounds tops. The vehicle excise duty, road fund license, call it what you will. Yeah. On a London traditional diesel taxi is about five hundred pounds a year. It's free of charge it's on still, this. It's still zero on this. Yes, right. and the and the servicing costs on this are about a hundred pounds every eighteen thousand miles. Right, and that's it. And and as you'll know, being electric, things like brake pads yeah. just don't wear out. No. Um, the the oldest one out there now has got about forty five thousand miles on it. Still, it's original back tyres. Right, it's had new ones on the front, but because it's driving by the front wheels. Yeah but the back ones are still original. Wow. So the, the running costs are... Oh, really? uh, and this particular person, I might say quickly, he is very pedantic about his, his, his records. In August, he did 2,850 miles, and it cost him £33.76. pence. That was his total fuel bill for the right. month, right. to do that mileage. Because wow. yeah. I'm trying to work out what the equivalent would be in a diesel car, you know, just in general, but in a taxi it would be... Uh, a lot more. I can't yeah, work it out. I mean, it, a diesel taxi costs about 25 pence a mile to drive. Right. Um, this, by comparison, costs three pence a mile to right. drive. That's the real difference. Right, okay. About, that's about an easy 10%. Way. Yeah. There or thereabouts. So that's the other thing that you'll be aware of then is the kind of the actual, you know, in theory, I understand that the servicing costs are less because there's less moving parts and less to go on. But you, you now know with many, many cabs how often they go in for a service. And particularly vehicles like this are being used far more than yeah, private vehicles. Are. So you're, you're clocking are. up the miles quicker. Yeah, for sure. And, you, and do you now know the servicing costs generally are less? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah absolutely. The last thing I want to say is that the LEVC taxes, which are very popular and I think look great. Yeah, they do. do. They the look job. lovely, don't they're, they? And they're very nice to yeah, ride. Yeah, they do. But they do have a petrol engine. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're six-seaters, they're a bigger vehicle. Yeah. This is the same size inside as a traditional TX4 right. diesel London taxi. It's yeah. exactly the same size. It's a five-seater. But, you know, whether drivers like them or don't like them, what is without question, it, this is the most cost-effective taxi that's ever, like, ever to ply its trade yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Um, there is no question about that at all. Mm. I can't wait to get back to when I'm in London next time and go, Chixi! Yeah, you'll see them. One of these. You'll I see know. them. Yeah, I'm looking forward but to it. But it's not only in London you'll see them. I right. have to tell you, they're in Nottingham currently being run. They're Brilliant. in Coventry running. We've just started selling them to Liverpool. Um, we've, we're in the middle of producing 65 to the Welsh Government. We're right. delivering them today and, and every day. Uh, and, and what these local authorities are doing, they're buying them themselves to say to the drivers, try it before you buy it. Wow. Which is a really great yeah. idea because they drive it for a month or two months or whatever they're driving it for. They're in exactly the same journey. They know what their average monthly right. costs are and suddenly they see these things with a fraction of what they're used to paying. Yeah. Um, and, and that's all that needs to be done really. Yeah. And, and uh, so we're working very closely with lots of local governments um, to promote the dynamo into the, the, to, to, to their drive towards clean air basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. So it wins on both sides, really. It's not just about cost saving. Yeah. Because there's no emissions, of course. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic. Well done, John. I'm really impressed with, with what you've done with this. It looks, Thank you. It looks Thank you. the business. Great stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robert.